So let me just say from the outset that if you have made your New Year's resolution, that I do hope and pray that you stick with it. Honestly, I don't want anyone to fail in achieving their goals. But I also believe that everyone, and for sure every leader, needs to have goals set for the year. Now those goals should be specific and, and itemized and broken down into achievable and trackable components. However, having been through a number of goal setting workshops and doing some leadership training and some coaching and helping people create and complete their vision, I don't see many parallels between New Year's resolutions on one hand and the way goal setting is typically taught on the other hand. For example, most people are familiar with SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, which means each letter stands for something different. So the S is for specific. Don't make nebulous goals, such as, you know, I will be successful this year. That just raises more questions. What does success look like? How will you get there? And that kind of brings us to the next letter, the M. The M stands for measurable. If you don't measure your progress or set a benchmark for success, then how do you ever know if you've arrived? The A stands for attainable. Is your goal actually something that can be attained or achieved? For example, if I were to say my goal is to play in the NBA, no matter how hard I work at achieving that goal and no matter how badly I want it, this goal will not come to pass because I simply do not possess the talent and ability necessary to play in the NBA. The R stands for relevant. Now, some smart charts use realistic for the R instead of relevant, but I think that realistic is already covered under the banner of attainable. The T stands for time-based. By what date will you achieve this resolution or this goal? Sometimes people don't fulfill their New Year's resolutions or more broadly their goals because they set the wrong goal. In other words, trying to achieve the impossible or the unnecessary or trying to force a goal to be achieved or a resolution to be completed in an unreasonable time frame. Now, some people set good goals or resolutions, but they don't attach the necessary processes and points of assessment that are required in order to A, achieve the goal or resolution or B, know if and when you have actually achieved your goal. So here, I wanna discuss three reasons why your New Year's resolutions could be killing your purpose. Number one, your resolutions are nebulous. I will spend less money. I will be a better worker. In fact, even if you look at this list right here, this is a good indication of some of the nebulous goals that people sometimes make. So nebulous means in the form of a cloud or haze, unclear, vague, ill-defined. These are not the words you want to use in order to define your New Year's resolution. You want a resolution that is clear, focused, attainable, and achievable. Nationalworld.com lists a study conducted by YouGov and has compiled a list of the top New Year's resolutions planned for 2022. Let's take a quick look at this. The number one most plan for, in quotes, resolution is to do more exercise slash improve fitness. I use the word planned very loosely. How are these people actually planning to improve their fitness? How much more exercise will they be doing and what type? This is the very definition of a nebulous goal. Next on the list, losing weight. How much weight? What types of exercise? Will you be running, CrossFit, HIIT workouts, lifting weights? How often? When you look at the list, 14% of the people actually selected something else as their resolution. So you're just going to do something. In a strange way, I suppose they might be the most successful people in the whole group because if they accomplish anything this year, they could just say that whatever they accomplished was their something else. The last thing I'll say here is think about it like this. If you want to find something, it is most helpful to have a specific set or list of directions. So if I asked you to go find this red boat, it's stranded on the shore of the Pacific Ocean, that would be a tall task. But what if I said, find a red boat at this degree latitude and this degree longitude? That would enable you to find the boat. And so we should apply the same thought process when setting a New Year's resolution. Be specific with your goals and resolutions.
make sure your resolutions are measurable and attainable. The second reason I think New Year's resolutions could possibly be killing your purpose is that your resolutions are normalizing failure. So what do I mean? You are indirectly normalizing accepting failure and to accept it from yourself. See, once you set a goal or make a resolution, that verbal commitment, even if it's only to yourself, is something that you now have to determine to live up to or to give up on. YouGov says that 3 in 10, 30% of those who made New Year's resolutions in 2021 claimed to have kept them all. 20% admit to not keeping any of their New Year's resolutions that they made. Other surveys indicate that only 4% who make New Year's resolutions actually stuck to them, with only up to 16% of respondents saying that they stuck to most of their New Year's resolutions. See, when you don't do a good job of setting a goal or resolution, which means that you didn't set a SMART goal and you didn't write it down and you didn't share your resolution with other people that can and will hold you accountable, then the likelihood of you achieving that New Year's resolution is drastically reduced. It's not just important to share your resolution with someone else, but it should be someone who is higher than you are currently in what you do or with someone like a spouse or best friend who has a vested interest in your success as well. Researchers say that sharing your goal with a higher up does more than keep you accountable. It also makes you more motivated simply because you care what this person thinks of you. For example, telling a mentor or manager about your hopes to get promoted could light a fire under you more than, say, a peer or a friend. For one part of a study, which is published in the Journal of Applied Psychology, 171 undergrad college students were given a basic computer task that involved moving a slider across the screen as many times as they could over a period of time. From there, they set a goal number of times they would complete the task on the next round. Researchers then sent a lab assistant to review their work, who either revealed they were a doctoral level student or said they were a student employee at a community college. When the study participants shared their target goal with the so-called doctoral level student, they were more likely to reach their goal. And finally, number three, and I think this is probably the biggest reason that I think New Year's resolutions may be, could be killing your purpose. Your resolutions are normalizing procrastination. Listen, I'll keep this one simple. If it is a good idea to do something on January 1st, it was a good idea on September 14th when you first thought about it, when you first had that idea. The fact that you let yourself go through the rest of the year makes it less likely that you will sustain that resolution in the new year. See, by delaying the start of working on your resolution until next year, you have secretly told yourself that this goal or resolution isn't that important. If you do it, cool, more power to you. If not, then maybe the year after that. In his 2010 book, The Procrastination Equation, How to Stop Putting Things Off and Start Getting Things Done, Dr. Steele says, surveys reveal that about 95% of people admit to procrastinating at least some of the time. But within that broad group, there's a subset of people who consider procrastination to be a defining characteristic of their personalities. In the 1970s, surveys indicated that only 5% of the population felt they belonged in the chronic category, says Dr. Steele. Today, that figure has risen to about 20%. Chronic procrastinators are people whose tendency to postpone permeates all aspects of their lives. It's a maladaptive lifestyle. They do it at home, school, or work, and in relationships or with responsibilities, says Joseph Ferrari, a professor of psychology at DePaul University in Chicago, who is alarmed by the number of people affected. Let's put that 20% figure in perspective, he says. It's higher than the number of people who suffer from substance abuse, alcoholism, or depression, which are all considered serious disorders. Now, with all that being said, why would it make sense to engage in a task such as setting a New Year's resolution that could create more problems than it solves? Listen, the goal is to finish. But so often we are taught and conditioned to celebrate New Year's Day as though the fact that we've rolled over from December to January means that something magical has happened. In reality, it's just the next day after New Year's Eve. It carries absolutely no special powers. So if it was a good idea 
to exercise more, go on a diet, stop smoking, go vegan, fast, pray more, cut people out of your lives, make purposeful connections, or any of the other things people claim to commit to in the new year, then it was also a good idea to do those things last July or May when you first thought about them. Now, I apologize if I'm pouring salt in the wound of your failed New Year's resolutions of the past, but I have some good news. There is a solution. We each need to resolve in our mind to think differently and thereby act differently. It all starts in your mind. The fulfillment of your purpose will eventually be seen, but not until there is a shift in your mind. There is no rule that says you have to wait until the new year in order to make better, wiser, or healthier decisions. There's also no rule that says a failed resolution has to stay that way. Make this year a great year. And one of the ways you can make sure that you do that is to set accurate, specific goals and resolutions, share them, talk to others, get somebody above you who can mentor you or hold you accountable, and proceed. I love y'all. Peace.